Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to be talking about how to use vectors within Procreate when you are creating iPad lettering. So this tutorial is kind of broken into two parts. The first part, we're going to take artwork that's already in Procreate. We're going to bring it into Illustrator. And we're going to talk about what our options are for vectorizing that artwork because Procreate is naturally a raster based program, meaning it's more like Photoshop where it's pixel base versus point base like you get in Illustrator. So there's a bit of a process that you need to go through in order to convert that Procreate artwork into Illustrator vectorized artwork. So I'm going to talk to you about best practices and things to be aware of and steps that you can take to save yourself a bunch of time later on. In the second part of this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about how to take Illustrator artwork that you've already created and then bring it into Procreate so you can create Procreate artwork with assets that you've maybe already created in Illustrator previously. So all that said, we're going to hop right in and get started. We're going to take artwork from Procreate and bring it into Illustrator first. Okay, so I have this artwork that I've already created in Procreate. It's just some really simple lettering. I've got it all on its own layer and it's all black. It doesn't matter if you have multiple layers or not, that's totally fine. I just happen to have all of mine on the same layer. But the important thing is, is this is all black artwork. I could create colored artwork, but that kind of limits my options once I get into Illustrator. So just keep that in mind. Um, I would recommend keeping it black if it's possible. You just have way more options opened up to you once you get into Illustrator with your vectorizing options. So from here, all I'm gonna do is hit this little gear icon up here. I'm gonna hit share. Uh, within the actions settings right here, choose share artwork. I'm going to export this as a JPEG. So I'm going to hit JPEG and then I'm going to wait for my iMac to show up on my airdrop. I'm going to hit that little icon and that's gone to my iMac and we're going to pick this up right in Illustrator. Okay, so we are in Illustrator and I've got my artwork that I brought in here, you can tell that it's an image. One way, if you're never sure if you have vectorized artwork or if you have an image of artwork, all you have to do is hit Command Y or Control Y on a PC and you can see it's just a box. If you only see a box, that means it's an image. If you see all of your letters outlined, um, that means it's vectorized. So we need to vectorize this. So you have two options here. The first option is you can use your already created artwork as a base and then recreate your entire piece in Illustrator from scratch if you'd like. Uh, the way that I would recommend doing that is just reduce your opacity over here if you come to your transparency. Um, I would just reduce this down a little bit so you can see, let's go all the way down to 20%. I would put it on its own layer and lock it and then create a new layer on top. So whenever you are coming in here, like if I wanted to use my blob brush tool to maybe create this lettering right here, I can hit shift B and select my blob brush and then I can kind of draw over this and I can see what it's looking like as I go. Um, another option is using your pen tool. You can come in here and start drawing out your path so it's a fully vectorized piece of artwork that you custom created using the tools within Illustrator outside of the live trace. Um, so that is also an option that you can use. So that's option number one, recreating the artwork using your previous Procreate artwork as a base within Illustrator. So the next option, let me undo everything that I've kind of done so far. Okay, so the other option you have is if you like your artwork, this is why it's important to have it um, be black. If you made yours color, then the option of setting it as your base and then recreating the artwork is the best option for you because then you already know how you're gonna color things once you've created the, the vector artwork to um, mimic what you've already done. So when it's black, it's much, much easier easier to trace. So we're just going to come up here and hit image trace and hit OK. And we're going to see what this looks like once it's all traced. And it looks very similar to the original. So I actually like uh, the settings that I already have, the default settings. If you wanted to change your settings, all you have to do is hit this little icon over here. And then you can adjust your threshold and your number of paths. Just keep in mind that the more paths, corners, all of the stuff that you have, the larger your file will be because the more points you have, which is your anchors down here, as this number increases, your file size will also increase. So just FYI on that. So I'm happy with how everything looks. So I'm just going to hit expand right here. And then I'm going to ungroup it, Command Shift G or Control Shift G on a PC. And I get rid of this um, by hitting Y on my keyboard 
clicking and then deleting and that gets rid of all my white areas. I actually do not recommend hitting ignore white on your live trace settings. Um, some of you probably already know about that. The problem with ignoring white is you'll get these rogue invisible shapes within your lettering especially and it becomes increasingly annoying as you go in and you clean up your vectors. So my recommendation, the way I've always done it and never had a problem, is just to use your magic wand to get rid of all of your white areas after you've already live traced it. So that's my little my little rant on that. So once you're in here, you can kind of see areas like this counter and the O. I can fix this up. I just select it, hit N on my keyboard for my pencil tool, and then I can just fix this path. I can also use an app called AstroPad, which I did create a tutorial on, and I will link to that in the video description. Um, just my way of cleaning up vectors using my iPad to do it. It kind of uh, is a cheap way to have a Cintiq without buying a Cintiq. So I really, really love the AstroPad app, especially for cleaning up my vectors. So that is your second Second option. So now we've got our Procreate artwork and it's fully vectorized and the way we can check it is just hitting Command Y or Control Y on a PC again and you can see everything is outlined so we know that this is, and you can see all the points too, this is vectorized artwork now. We don't have a box anywhere so we don't have any images, everything is vectorized. Okay. So the second part of this tutorial we're going to move right into, and that is using artwork that's already created in Illustrator and bringing it into Procreate and being able to use it within Procreate. So I'm going to open up some of my artwork that I've already got, and this is my Vector Leaves and Flourishes kit, which I'll leave a link to if you want to check it out. All of these are 100% vector, and we're just going to take this arrow right here and we're going to use this in Procreate. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to create a brand new document. I usually like keeping my shapes between 500 and 1000 pixels on their longest edge, which is usually always large enough for the document that I'm working in. So I'm just going to go File, New, and we're going to create this one at 500 pixels tall. So this is going to be web, so I'm going to change this to RGB, and this is going to be pixels this time. So there are also two options of using your vector artwork within Procreate. So kind of a rule of thumb where you can apply both methods to whatever artwork you're using just to keep everything super, super easy is to make it a square. So I'm going to do 500 pixels by 500 pixels right here and then hit create. So I'm just going to paste in that arrow right now and we're just going to scale this up so it fills in the box but does not extend beyond the artboard and once again this is a square box that's 500 pixels by 500 pixels. So the rule of thumb here is you want to have a solid color when you're bringing it in. And the other rule of thumb is, is out of those two options, you can use your vector artwork as just placed artwork in your Procreate document, or you can use that artwork and create a brush out of it. And in order to create a brush out of it, it has to be white. So white is also a solid color. So even though it's a little hard to see as we work, white is the color that I would recommend you export your artwork as. So I'm gonna select this arrow and I'm going to change it to white. If you have trouble working with it kind of looking invisible, remember you can enter outline mode by just hitting command Y or control Y on a PC so you can still see the edges then even though it's all white. So what we're going to do now is we're going to export this as a PNG file and then we're going to use that PNG file in our iPad. So I'm going to go file, export, export as and when your screen pops up choose where you're going to save it Make sure PNG is selected down here. Choose Use Artboards. This part's really important. So make sure that is checked and choose a name. So I'm going to hit air. I'm going to call this arrow and hit export. And then you're going to get this dialog box that pops up. Make sure your resolution is high at 300 ppi and you want to make sure your background color is transparent. Down here, um, you can see you can choose white or black, but make sure transparent is selected. That part's important. And then hit OK. All right, from here, we're just going to airdrop this back into our iPad. So I'm going to go into Finder. I've got my arrow right here. I'm going to hit N for a new window. I'm going to choose airdrop right here. I'm going to wait for my iPad to show up. 
and now it's right there so I can click and drag my arrow right onto my iPad. So once it's in my iPad, it's automatically saved in my photos folder. If you are not on an, a Mac originally, your computer, your desktop, um, all you have to do is email it to yourself and then save that photo into your photos folder. Okay, so we're gonna pick up right where we left off on the iPad. Okay, so we are back in Procreate, so the first thing we need to do is bring in that arrow, but since it's white, you're not really going to be able to see it the way it is right now. So we're gonna change the background color. I have this color, this darker color, selected. Um, and then just on your first layer, you're just gonna tap it and choose Fill. And now we've got that color there, so once we bring in our arrow, we'll be able to see it. So let's go ahead and bring in the arrow. We're gonna hit the wrench up here, and then choose Insert Flat Image choose photos, and then I actually save all of my exported vector elements into this PNG folder. I created it within my photos folder. So I'm just gonna hit PNG, and then I'm gonna select my arrow, which I have right here. And there it is, nice and white. So I can scale it down to the size that I need. And now I've got it in here so I can start working with it. But since we exported it as a solid color, so just no gradients, um, we can start dropping color into it so we can change the color of the different segments that make up this arrow, which is pretty cool. So I can just come over here. Let me deselect that. I can come over here and maybe I want the stem of this arrow to be maybe this lighter yellow color. So all I have to do is drag that yellow color over. I can choose if I want my arrowhead to be orange and then I can come down here and select different colors for the bottom part of my arrow as well. Okay, so that is one way we can use our arrow. And obviously, um, if we're using this with iPad lettering, you can set your lettering around it. You could move um, your arrow, make it smaller, and we could just, maybe this is a logo or a logo concept that you're working on, and you can put in your lettering right below it or on either side of it. So this is pretty cool, all the different options that you have. So moving on, so that was option number one, just bringing it in as an image, recoloring it, and kind of setting it the way that you like it. So option number two is creating a brush out of it so you can kind of stamp it whenever you need it. You don't have to go in your photos folder every time. So because we exported it as a white arrow, it's all perfectly set up to create a brush. So I'm gonna turn off this layer and let's start from scratch with making our brush. So when you come up here, you can actually move these over and you can create an entirely new brush set by hitting new set. I have one that I've already started called custom right here. So I'm just gonna go into there and those are some of my custom brushes. So I'm gonna create a new brush within this custom brush set and I'm just gonna hit the plus sign right here. So this is where I can create all of my brush settings. I do have a full tutorial on what all the settings with creating a brand new brush are, um, but I'm gonna walk you through the ones that I use when I'm creating one that is vector based or just a PNG or an image that I want to use within my artwork versus just a brush that I would use for iPad lettering. So over here, you can name your brush right here. I'm going to call this one arrow. And we need to select a shape source first. So I'm going to hit select shape photos. I know that my arrow is in my PNG, so I'm going to select my arrow right there. If you want to add a texture to it, now is the time to do it right here. I'm just going to keep this nice and regular. Um, so you can just go into your pro library and kind of scroll until you see the solid white box right here for blank. So that will give you a solid texture whenever you're using your new brush. So you saw that it was really important that we're using a square right here. If this were any other dimension, if it were more wide or more tall, it's going to squish your image. So just be aware that when you're exporting out of Illustrator, you want to make sure you check that use artboards checkbox and you want to make sure your artboard is a square size. Okay, so there's just a couple of settings that I change in here. So I can use it the way that I want to. The first one is listed under stroke right here. And all I do is move the spacing all the way up. So they're further apart. I'm not getting a bunch whenever I, I tap. Uh, and then the other thing I do is over here where it says general, I make sure that my size limit is all the way up. My opacity limit is all the way up. And then orient to iPad screen is really important. So you're just gonna toggle that on. And that's all you need to do in order to use this as your own brush stamp. So I'm gonna come back in here and I have a, a lighter color selected. 
and then create a new layer because this one's turned off the selected one right now. So we're going to create a new layer and all I have to do is tap once and I've got my arrow. And even though it's the color that I have defined right here, like if, if you don't have any of these extra parts that you want to color later on, if you have some branches or leaves, it's perfect because you just change your color right here and you can stamp immediately. You don't have to keep on bringing in color over. But if you do have an image like this where you want to change maybe the colors down here, you can still do that because this is a solid, solid colored image. So I can still change the different portions of my graphic right there just by dragging that color in. So that is how to export Procreate artwork and digitize it within Illustrator two ways, as well as bringing Illustrator artwork into Procreate and using it within Procreate two ways. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. And I am listing everything that we mentioned throughout this tutorial in the video description, so be sure to check that out as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.